Tajik. Did you study Tajikistan? Do you know Tajikistan? It's a country. It's not a Turkish-speaking country. It's a country that uses a different language based on another huge empire in the region. Good guess, not Mongolian Empire, but that's a good guess, yeah. Persia. It's the Persian Empire. So in Tajik, they say Shemul, <coughs> Sh, and it would be, it looked like this, Shemul Chekil, which means how are you? But it's also <coughs> interesting. If you, are you a Turkish speaker? Is anybody a Turkish speaker? Because Turkish comes from Turkic language, but also comes from Arabic, also comes from Persian, right? There's many Persian words and Arabic words in the Turkish language. So if you know Persian, then you already know 30% of Uzbek. Does that make sense? Because Uzbek and the Turkic languages come from Persian and Arabic languages too. So that's how you would greet someone. But we're saying you need to be careful because the people are Russian in Central Asia. And then you have to learn how to say Zdravastvukhtia, which is not easy. How long did it take you to learn to say that? Zdravastvukhtia. Zdra, can you make that sound? The Zdra, Arva sound? I can't say the Arva. It's hard. It's hard, right? I so I say that. Yeah, it's hard. It's very hard. It's so you have to be careful. Or you could talk to them in English, but they wouldn't understand what you were talking about. Because not everybody knows English in this part of the world. Why? Why don't they know English? Why wouldn't someone know English out there? Why wouldn't they know English in Central Asia? I don't know. Let's check. Let's take a look at the map. Uh, I have a map of Central Asia, and here it is. This is it. Boom. Did you ever hear of Kazakhstan? Did you ever hear of it? It's not Kazakhstan. Okay, I got some. I got some students who think it's Kazakhstan. All right, it's not Kazakhstan. It's Kazakhstan. In Turkish, they say Kazakhstan. It's the ninth biggest country in the world. You've never heard of it. Don't worry, nobody else has either. Unless you're going to be Bora. And if you saw the movie Bora, you shouldn't know because you're not 17 years old unless you got parental consent. But okay. <laughs> Kazakhstan is the ninth. It is. It's the ninth biggest country in the world. Wow. Whatever. Who cares? Uzbekistan. Nobody cares about Uzbekistan. People care less about Turkmenistan. People definitely don't care about Kyrgyzstan. Sometimes the Kyrgyz don't even care about Kyrgyzstan. And Tajikistan is the bottom of the post-Soviet barrel, right? This was all the former Soviet Union. If you want to go to the bottom, then start in Tajikistan and start working your way up. Tajikistan is the poorest, right? Then you work your way up to Kyrgyzstan, move over to Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, and then into Kazakhstan, which is fairly developed. They have a ton of oil and gas here and lots of Turks. There are tons of Turks who have moved from Turkey in here because they have this Turkic connection. They can learn language very quickly and they do business. So here it is. Mr. Abzi calls this the black hole. All right? Here is Turkey. Here, is, everybody knows about Turkey except that one girl I met when I was younger who thought it was a bird, not a country, okay? But she was stupid. This is Turkey over here. This is China. And this is Russia. Everybody knows that. Then there's Afghanistan. You probably, I don't know, you heard on the radio in the background, there might be a war there or something like that. You do, like Muslims or maybe something. All right? Iran. You know that they may be trying to build a nuclear weapon because they want to destroy the world or something. You've, I don't know. You've heard that. Pakistan, the United States is bombing them. Maybe you've heard that somewhere. Okay? And then India. Everybody knows about India because in seventh grade you probably had to study it, right? Uh, but nobody knows anything about this, the black hole. Does anybody here know what a black hole is? What is a black hole? Yeah, what's a black hole? It's like, it's like uh, I don't know exactly what it is. It's like a gathering stage that. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what it is. <laughs> exactly. It's nothing, right? The black hole is nothing. And Mr. Abbott will challenge you, and you won't do it. The child question is all the time. They never take the challenge because they don't care. But I would ask you to maybe watch the news. Watch BBC News and watch the World Weather Report. And they'll get the weather for Ankara. And then they'll get the weather for Beijing. And then they'll get the weather for Moscow. There won't be anything from here, right? Um, they'll just be empty across the whole map. Because people don't know about this part uh, of the world. But I'm here to tell you today that it is an important part of the world. Just by looking at the map, why do you think it might be an important part of the world? Can you tell by looking at the map? Yeah. Connects Asia and Europe. Yes, it connects Asia and Europe. 
people in Khalistan consider themselves to be your Asian. You're Asian. It's a mixture between European and Asian. My wife is Kazakh. Okay, you should look, she looks very Asian to me, but she considers herself to be your Asian. Sometimes she looks in the mirror and she says, Do you think I look European? You look like a model to me, right? But she considers herself to look kind of your Asian because she's Kazakh, which is between Europe and Asia. Good. Why else might it be important? Yeah, so you're on a roll. What's your name? Harry. You know last one, yeah. What's your name? Okay. 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 Silk Road, oh, what's over here? Turkey, what's over here? China, so many years ago, people went on the Silk Road, the Ipet Yul in Turkish. In Kazakh, they call it the Jebet Jole. In Russian, they call it Shokhovi Put. They went right through here, so the people through here did lots of trading, and there were many different people who stayed and lived and made families, that's important. What else, what, what else might be important? Take a look. Just by the map. Why might it be important? Yeah? Oh, the Caspian Sea! Yeah, what do you know about the Caspian Sea? It's full of fish. What do you know what else it's full of? Oil. That makes it important. Why else might it be important? What's that neighborhood like? Is that like, do you know the geography of North America? I'm American. I live in the United States. Imagine this was the United States. Okay, let's check out the neighborhood. Canada. They're basically Americans and they're never going to do anything to us at all. Mexico. We've been hitting them overhead with a stick for 200 years, right? They're not going to do anything to us. The neighborhood is very nice. And then you look over here, if this is America, you know what's over here? The ocean. And on this side is the ocean. And Mr. Red, no one knows. This is a really nice place to live. I don't know if my neighbor was Russia, if it would be the same situation. Does that make sense? I don't know if my neighbor was China. I don't know if my neighbor was Pakistan. I don't know if my neighbor was Afghanistan. I don't know if my neighbor was evil, excuse me, I mean Iran, okay? <laughs> Sometimes it slips, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm indoctrinated. I am an indoctrinated American, uh, that, that was culturally insensitive and inappropriate, I'm sorry, but I am a product of my media system. Uh, so <laughs> Iran, and then whatever over here, Azerbaijan never heard of it, talk to Mary Iman, okay? Because he's, you know, <laughs> yeah. talk to Mary Iman, he's Azerbaijani Russian, all right? So he's a great kid to know. So, it's called geostrategic. I don't know if you know this word. What does geo mean? Earth. What does strategy mean? Yeah. Turkey is also geostrategic, isn't it? It's a great geostrategic place. So if you're Russia, you want to make sure that these guys are on whose side? Yeah. If you're China, you want to make sure that these guys are on whose side? Yeah. How about Afghanistan? How about Iran? And then way over here across the Atlantic Ocean, there's that place called the United States. And they also want to make sure that they have good relations with these countries. Does that make sense? Because the United States sometimes has problems with Russia. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed that. Sometimes with China. Sometimes with Afghanistan. And it might be a problem with Iran, too. So the US is very concerned about these places. That's why Mr. Abizade went there. I went there as a student so that I could study the cultures there and learn a little bit about how the people lived. And then I worked for a program that was sponsored by the US government. So I could help them with their media, help them with their education. I did that for a couple of years in a place called Kazakhstan and a place called Tajikistan. I also traveled frequently to Kyrgyzstan. I was lucky enough to go to China and to Mongolia. And you'll probably never go there. You've lived there, so you know. Not many people go there, right? Unless they're going there for work. But if you ever get a chance, I would recommend that you go there. So what's the culture like? What do these people look like? Well, here you go. Uh, music. They have music. And they have cars. And they have buildings. And they have schools and Muslims. OK? And I taught in a Muslim school. 
and no one tried to kill me, okay? Which kind of baffles people, right? Muslims? I went to Tajikistan to live for a year, and my mother said, you got Muslims there? And I said, I don't know. It's just like 99.9% .9 Muslim, but I couldn't tell her that, she would be nervous, right? But when you go to Central Asia, you can meet the nicest people in the world, and they happen to be many of them Muslims, right? But they're fine people, even though we have some ideas about Muslims in our countries. Here's the music. Check it out. Stop playing. That's not cats fighting, just in case you thought it was. It's actually a music system. That was culturally sensitive and inappropriate. <laughs> you can't talk about Central Asia without talking about horses. These people love horses. They ride horses and they eat horses. Not everyone in Central Asia eats horses, but Kazakhs tend to eat horses, and Kyrgyz tend to eat horses. My wife's mother came from Kazakhstan last month, and she brought me horse sausage. It's sausage made out of horse, and it's very good. You can have horse milk. It's called kumus. It's also very good. It comes from horses, okay, female horses, all right? And it's, my, it's all boys here. I once taught in Catholic school. They all freaked out, right? It's mare's milk. Right? You can drink it, don't worry, it's not going to kill you, it's actually good. The women are actually absolutely beautiful, but they don't always dress like this. This is traditional clothing in Kazakhstan. <laughs> It's all the same. The woman goes like this, or whatever, and the man goes like this. All right, it's pretty easy. So if you can do that, you can dance anywhere. All right. Sometimes the real cool guys they come up to the side of the dance floor and they start going like this. All right. So you don't really need a lot of dancing ability if you've ever been to seeing them dance in, in Central Asia. It's pretty easy. <laughs> In the background, you can see what? You know what's in the background? Check it out. Turkey. But out there, they actually have 
what we call inter-ethnic violence a lot. That means one Uzbek person picks up a shovel and kills his Kyrgyz neighbor, okay? And it happened uh, two years ago, 300 people were killed. It's really sad, it's terrible. It happens like this. Uh, when my wife lives down here, there's a huge mixture of Uzbeks and Kazakhs, and they have stereotypes about each other that are fairly uh, bad, yes? Kazakh stereotype, lazy, eat too much meat, drink too much horse milk, okay? And they'll lie to you, all right? Uzbeks, they'll cheat you in business every <coughs> single time, okay? Kyrgyz, they're like Kazakhs, but they're not smart. <laughs> so they'll try to, I just, I'm telling you, I, you live in a place, you understand these things. They'll try to S-C-R-E-W you, but they just can't do it properly. It's a stereotype, right? They're trying to cheat you, but they can't. <laughs> Tajiks, we'll hold them for last. Uh, Turkmen, not too much about the Turkmen other than they live in a closed society uh, where their leader was absolutely insane. He died a couple of years ago. Now they have a new leader. He's building an ice hockey rink so that he can teach his people how to, this, that's all you need to know. It's a desert. Okay. He's building an ice hockey rink to teach them how to play hockey. Huh. Uh, the Tajiks are, I like Tajiks. Uzbeks don't like Tajiks. Kyrgyz don't like Tajiks. Kazakh don't like Tajiks. I like Tajiks. And I'll tell you the story. It happened to me only once in Central Asia. Uh, if I was in Kazakhstan and I went to the store and there was some food, and I said, is that food good? They would say, it's the best food in the world ever. And maybe it wouldn't be. And Tajikistan, I went into the shop and I said, is that food good? And the guy said, I'll tell you the truth, no. And I said, whoa. He said, go down the street a couple blocks. They got better food there. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. Then one day I was at the bazaar and I bought a bunch of eggs. And I gave the girl too much money and I walked about half a kilometer away and this little girl was pulling on my shirt and she gave me my money back. Right? So Tajiks, I think, if you're looking stereotypically, tend to be very nice, warm-hearted people who uh, have a sense of fairness. Okay? My wife's people, Kazakhs, I'm not saying they're bad, but I think you've you got to know them. Don't mess with a Kazakh. <laughs> right? Never mess with a Kazakh person. Uh, because they had a difficult life and they know how to use their hands, they like to fight, and they know how to use their brains. We'll show you a video. This is not totally representative of Central Asia, but it's the number one Kazakh rapper, and his name is Yebalat, and this song is called Zhigatia. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah, a lot. Uh, yeah, I you know, it's funny when they sing raps in other languages. This song is called Jigatia. And in Turkish, Jigit is something to do with horses, right? Or Yigit. Uh, yeah. And in Kazakh, Jigit means cowboy. But it really means real man, right? You say, Min Jigit, I'm a real man. You'd say that in or you'd say Jaxa Jigit, which means excellent man. Now this man is Jigit. I'm spitting on myself, sorry. Uh, check this out. Is it the number one cause I'm rapping? What we need to know about Kazakhs, they like to wrestle and they like to box. And you can check the gold medals and silver medals in the Olympics. They do well in that part of the Olympics. Not all Kazakhs look like this guy, mean, and they're not all jacked like that, but still, I would not mess with a Kazakh, ever. Or a Turk, or a Russian, or a Chinese. I wouldn't mess with anybody, because people are tough, but Kazakhs are pretty tough. They can tougher. <laughs> If you want to see more, go to YouTube because it's a little bit too much for now. Pictures! I only have 35 minutes to teach you all about Central Asia. I'm sorry that we're moving at a fast pace. 
What do the pictures look like? Well, let's start with Tajikistan. I'm going to show you some pictures of when I was in Tajikistan. The capital is Dushanbe. All right. Uh, I can't tell you anything about Dushanbe. I don't have enough time other than it's difficult living. But my pictures come from over here. I was on this side of Tajikistan. And here are the pictures, so you can see what it looks like. That's Kazakhstan. Okay. That's Afghanistan. Uh, so these are some kids. They're just nice little kids on a donkey, right? <coughs> nice little guys. This is a veiled girl, so you can see that in that part of Tajikistan, it's probably fairly religious and conservative. She's looking at me because I'm a foreigner. This is me uh, right on the border of Tajikistan and Afghanistan. So you get a sense of what this looks like here, the geography. It's pretty steep. No. It's a road in Tajikistan. This is a house across the border in Afghanistan. This is Tajikistan. That's, that's a nice area. Tajikistan. And then I took a picture of two Afghan guys walking on a mountain trail. You can't really see here, but these guys are barefoot. These guys will walk around the mountain with no shoes on. You know what I do when I go to the mountains? I get the best hiking boots you got. I get a 10 gallon drum of water. I get vitamins. I got sports bars, yeah? I got power bars. I get, in case anything happens, I'm gonna be ready. And then you go up there and you see these guys walk by. No shoes. It's unbelievable what these people can do. Uh, oh, by the way, never mess with an Afghan. Ever, ever, ever. If you guys ever work for your governments, and someone in the government says, I think it might be a good idea to invade Afghanistan. Say no, <laughs> all right? Because you, I was down here with a Russian guy, and we were way over here. And he said, look at those guys. He said, Russia invaded Afghanistan. We fought there for 10 years, he said. And he said, never mess with those people. I said, okay, we've only been there 12 years so far in the United States, right? But really, don't mess with them. It's only so much I can teach you about Central Nobody cares. Cancel. Uh, Kazakhstan. This is southern Kazakhstan. This is a Muslim cemetery where they build small mausoleums for each person. So it's not the European cemetery where you have the headstone. If they build mausoleums, anybody know what a mausoleum is? Any idea what a mausoleum is? Mausoleum. It's a place that you bury someone, but you build a little tomb for him. But if the tombs are all different sizes, what might that tell you? Why are the tombs different sizes? Yeah? Different types of kind of the person might be looking for Yes. So even in death, you might know that that person is more influential, right? So if you're a more influential rich or rich person, you'll have a bigger mausoleum built for you. This is a big mausoleum for one person, right? So you can imagine that this is probably an important person. And this mausoleum is built to the man who started the Sufi sect of Islam. I don't know, do you guys know what a Sufi is? You ever see those guys dancing around in circles? Those guys are Sufis, okay? So this is where the founder, uh, I think they called Roland Dervishes or something, right? The founder was buried here. This is the guy who works there. He keeps it clean and collects money as a charity for the Muslim his man. Most all pictures should have me. What's that? What is it? I don't know. Is that the term? Is that the Turkish word for Muslim? Uh, no, no. Um, it... Oh, for the worldly services. Yeah, Turks are very much influenced by Sufi Islam. Yeah, so it could be. This man is called Sekijib in in Kazakh which means the candle guy. This is where the Sufi founder was born. I made a pilgrimage, yes. This is my American friend. He looks like a thug, but he's a nice person. This is my wife's cousin. She's also very nice. This says this is where he was born. You know what this is? You know what this is? this out there? What do the Turks call it? What do you call it? I don't know. It's a monte. Monte, oh. It's a monte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. I came to, yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I came to Turkey and I saw monte on the menu. I ordered it and I was like, what is this? It was okay. It was okay. It's okay. This is a steam filled, this is a, a meat filled steamed 
and dumpling, full of lamb and sometimes pumpkin and sometimes onion. And you eat it with your hands. It's made all through Central Asia. Koreans make this. I don't know if the Japanese make a version of it. The Chinese make it. Many people in Asia make it, and it is awesome. If you get a chance, go to Aksarai and eat it. They make it in Aksarai. That's me. This is my wife. She looks like a Mongolian. But she's Kazakh. They're very close. That's my walking stick. Anybody who goes in the mountains got to have a walking stick. Mr. Rendon? Always. You've got to have a walking stick. And these are the mountains. Crazy beautiful. There's snow up there in the mountains, and even in the springtime. I walked about up through here and had a saw because the snow was too deep and I was wearing sneakers. This is a dog with sunglasses. I put it in here because it's a dog with sunglasses. It has nothing to do with Central Asia at all. But students are usually bored by these types of presentations, so we put a picture of a dog with sunglasses. Also, you have the Russian guy with no shirt on. Uh, <laughs> If you know any Russian people, talk to them. They're a little bit different than Americans, okay? Uh, Americans were sitting by, I was sitting with my American friends here, all tired because we walked about a kilometer, right? And we're eating our power bars and hydrating with all types of water. And here come the Russian guys just plowing through. This guy's got shoes on, but some of them didn't, right? And they're just plowing through the mountains. And probably in Colorado, people do this too. Walk in the mountains barefoot, they're just, no. okay. <laughs> I saw like a 90-year-old woman go by without shoes on, and that's when I questioned my manhood, right? Because I had the number one boots that you could buy. I had the best stuff. And here comes a 90-year-old Russian woman at a million miles an hour. I felt kind of weak. This is like, this is me. This is kind of like me trying to make my BA face. You can't really see it here, but I'm trying to make my scowl. Don't mess with me in the mountains. It's all that. These are horsies. Drinking water. It's an oasis in the middle of nowhere. These are horses waiting for the bus. I also put this in here because you have to put these stupid pictures in. It's interesting, 15 year old kids, right? Uh, so this is the bus stop, and there were horses in it. They all thought it was funny. This is better than pizza. Do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? You're not at all. So, I don't know why it's so good. It's basically rice made in lamb fat. Mm. With onions and carrots. Mm. And then and garlic. And then on top, they put more lamb. If you go to a Cossack person's home, you won't even see the rice. Because you're the guest. You'll just get a plate, and the rice will be there, but on top will just be full of meat. Right? Cossacks are huge meat eaters. It's unbelievable. Sometimes my wife wakes up in the morning and says, I need a hamburger for breakfast. Because they just have to eat meat all the time. So good. This is the mountains, a beautiful place in Kazakhstan. This is a glacier on the border of Kyrgyzstan. So you get a sense of what the border looks like between these countries. You can actually walk up and over that into Kyrgyzstan if you want, but it's about five or 6,000 meters up and it's pretty cold. Here's another Muslim. I went there three times. You know what that makes me? Haji. Does anybody know what Haji means? Yeah. Yeah. This is in Mecca. But for Kazakhs and Central Asians, this is the number one pilgrimage site. It's the site devoted to the founder of the Sufi sect of Islam. And it was built by a man named Timurlan. I don't know if you've ever heard of Timurlan, but he was a great conqueror in the 15th century. And supposedly, by legend, after this was built and a couple other mausoleums, he had the architect's eyes pulled out. Why would you pull an architect's eyes out? Yeah? So you can't build a single thing. Yes, exactly. I don't know if that's true. But that's what they said. There's a, the front of the mausoleum, it's a beautiful place. So I went there three times and the Cossacks considered me to be Haji, Haji Abu Zaid, or I call myself sometimes Haji Abu Zaid. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, I can call myself whatever I want. All right, uh, this is a little mosque, whatever, the Muslims, Muslim mosques. This 
me with a gun. I always take a picture of myself with a gun whenever I can. I don't believe in violence, but I like to hold guns. This is an old gun from a museum, and I felt like I should hold it and take a picture. You can come to my room and see me with an AK-47 if you want. This is an Uzbek. And they're not as dangerous as people think, because I'm standing next to him. It's OK. It's a, it's a TV station near Uzbekistan, and that was my job at the time. I used to actually go to TV stations and see how they were doing, and see what their equipment was like, and help them with their equipment. And it was a great job. Then there was a financial crisis, and they couldn't fund me anymore, and I had to become a teacher. But I love it. I love it. This is me. This is the guy, the Uzbek guy. This is the Quran. I actually have a TV show for the Quran. Every Friday, Juma, right? It's a big day. They have a TV show for the Quran. I thought that was pretty cool. This is me. <laughs> Don't you hate when people show you pictures and it's always them, right? This is me sitting behind the desk because I always wanted to be on TV. How's that, girls? Why don't you step, boys? Sounds like girls are awesome. I married one. If you get a chance, you should, you should introduce yourself. This is traditional dress. They don't dress like this, okay? You know, a, a girl from college time isn't going to enter IICS and show up dressed like this the first day. Don't worry. So, so if you ask her out on a date, she's not going to look like that? No, yeah. If you, you're like, hey, let's go get some greasy rice in, in lamb fat, she's not going to come dressed like that. She's probably going to wear a mini skirt, to tell you the truth. This is me. This is a Kazakh yurt, which is the home, that, the traditional home that the Kazakhs lived in for many years. They fill those things with meat. These are old Kazakh guys. Respected. This is the outfit they wear <coughs> only on holidays. If they dress like this all the time, no one would take them seriously. Kazakh girls. Kazakhs. Kazakh boys in a traditional Say, horses and sheep and cows. Food. Food. When you go to a Central Asian, you probably know this. When you go to a Central Asian home, they put every piece of food they have in the house on the table. It's just all there. And they say, eat. And then you eat, and they say, eat more. <laughs> and then you eat more, and they say, why don't you eat? <laughs> <laughs> You don't like it? So my first day there, in the village, I lived in a village uh, for a couple of years too. I was, in, I was sitting there and around a table like this, and I figured I was to eat. So I started eating, and I was nervous, because I didn't really know the language well at the time, so I just ate more. But I, I got so full, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go home. And I'm like, no, 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 you're not going home. Then a sheep comes through, because they're going to slaughter that thing. We're going to eat that thing. I didn't know that we were going to eat a sheep. So the sheep comes through, and then that rice comes, and all that monte comes, and then at the end of the day, I want to go home, I can't even bend over to put my shoes on. I kind of had to wiggle into my shoes because my stomach was so far out to here. So Central Asians, especially Kazakhs, they will feed you well. That's a sheep's head. Which goes to the respective guest. Did you ever have the sheep's head? Do like, so they eat it in Morocco? Oh, yeah. It's not good. The cheeks. They eat it in the hard cheeks. Sheep cheek is like putting a full pack of bubble gum into your mouth, except it's not bubble gum flavor. Right? It's sheep cheek flavor, which is nasty business, people. All right, I got you all riled up, now I can leave. But uh, that's a, your 30 minute, 35 minute introduction into Central Asia. Yeah, the geography you get a look at. We make some jokes about it sometimes, uh, but it's really a nice place. Islam is part of their culture. Turkic language is part of their culture. Russian language is part of their culture. If you meet a Central Asian student at school, you might talk to them. Uh, we do have one in 10th grade named Timur. I don't know if you know Timur. Do you know Timur? He's from Uzbekistan. Uh, he's actually Uzbek, from Uzbekistan. Uh, we have Hazal in 10th grade. She's not from Turkmenistan, but she lived there for a number of Do you know Josh Kim's brother in seventh grade? 
I don't know if you know. Yeah, he's uh, Korean, but grew, they grew up in Kazakhstan. And of course, you lived in Uzbekistan. Yeah. And Tajikistan. So here's your guy. Now you guys know a little bit more. You can talk to him. Thank you very much. I have time for maybe a two or three questions if you have questions. Otherwise, I need to go. Uh, yeah, please. How did the how did the evaporation of the scene affect it? Ooh. Did you watch the documentary? I did, but is there more effect that? Yeah, this is a great question. Uh, and Mr. Rendon will probably go over it with you in class. One of the big problems with the evaporation of the RLC is that those people who live around the RLC, they can't live there anymore. If they live there, what might happen to them? They get ill because of the toxins, right? Uh, they, the crops don't grow, they can't really work. So there's actually 30 to 40 million people who live in here. So one of the main problems, the social problem, is that many of these people are going to go other places. Does that make sense? To look for work. They might come to Turkey. Many people do come to Turkey to work. They might try to go to Russia to work. But that's one of the major problems there. People cannot live there anymore, and those that do end up getting Said. Are they still draining the rivers? Yes, they are. I don't know if you learned this industrialization. What's the number one objective of industry? You know, what's the number? One, if you open up industry, what's your number one objective? Profits. Profits. It's not saving the Karakal Pakistani people here or the Kazakh people, the Uzbek people, right? That's a great question. Uh, not many people know about that. It's one of the greatest ecological disasters in the world today. But because not many people know about the region at all, it's hard to focus on that. That's why Mr. Rendon and I put this into our ninth grade unit, because we're always studying about France and Russia and England and America, but we don't usually have a chance to study some other interesting places where there would be ecological problems. Another question? Uh, OK. No question? OK, I, I do have to go. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Oh.